Hello, this is Nathan Stuke, the CEO of Whisper. And uh, today we're going to be talking about leadership again. I know it's been a lot of videos on leadership, but it's so vitally important. And this is part zero um, B. So this is the second part that we're gonna be talking about. And I'm gonna continue on with the, the built to lead uh, theme and framework. And uh, that's, that's kind of where we're gonna jump right into it actually and talk about it. Um, hopefully you guys are watching these in, in order. Um, and, and the built to lead is, is a framework that we've been using now for, for many, many months. And uh, they have a great blog. They have also have a lot of really good information on their, uh, on their website about leadership and what that means. The blog has all kinds of really, really good posts. And, and for, for part zero A, uh, we talked about building a strong core, right? We talked about how um, to have a good, strong um, physical core, you would be, that's for top athletes that would use it, uh, that you wouldn't be able to jump or stand up or do anything without a strong core. And when you take that core and say, okay, that's, I understand the analogy of needing a strong core. What does that mean though for me um, with my character? And that character, um, that's where you come into this virtual core. Uh, and we talked about needing a worldview. And, and those worldviews are like, for me, these are my personal worldviews. And, and again, worldviews aren't right or wrong. It's just the way you see the world. Uh, my worldview is that one of them is that God is the center of my moral compass. Uh, another one is, is that my dyslexia is my greatest strength. Uh, and that's just the way I see the world and, and some things that I, I have on that. Um, the other one we talked about was identity. Uh, so this is how you view yourself. Um, uh, one of them that I have on my identity is I'm driven to give others opportunities that, uh, that they normally would not have. Um, I'm also able to change my thinking about myself and others. I believe in the... Um, view that we have a, a mindset that can change, a growth mindset as opposed to a finite mindset. Uh, then we talked about your principles. Uh, and the, the principles are the I will and I, I will not statements. Uh, and those statements are, I will become uh, the leader that Whisper needs me to be. And that's something that I, I feel very strongly about. And by but, but putting it down in writing, all of these things I've put down in writing. And because of my dyslexia, um, you know, I don't like to do writing. I don't like to, to write things down, but it's been very powerful to write these down and come back to them and be able to see, do I really believe in this or do I not? And one of them that I did was I, I believe I will become the leader that Whisper needs me. And that means I have to change and I have to mold myself that as Whisper grows and I need to be a different leader or a better leader, or I need to learn from my experiences, I'm willing to do that. Uh, I will not. These are some of the ones that are, are kind of interesting. Uh, I will not become boastful of my success. Uh, I will remember that the Lord has given me everything I have. Uh, and then that's something that as I read over this is like, yes, I, I believe that. And I, I want to make sure I remember that I'm humble and that my success is, is the success that he's given me. So those are some of the three things. Again, that's your, your worldview, your identity, and your principles. And, and today we're going to talk about the next three uh, we're going to talk about your passions. So what are you passionate about? What do you love? Um, and then we're going to talk about your purpose. And, and all of these build on, on each other. So it wouldn't do you very good um, to say, hey, you know, what, what's my purpose? And maybe some of you can spout off exactly what your purpose is, and, and that's great. Um, but it, it's interesting that as you start with your worldview and then you drill down into these, that you're all driving to kind of that one thing is, what's my purpose? And, and then there's also a process and the process kind of ties it all together. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today as to how do you make this a living, living journey? This isn't a, Hey, I, I checked the boxes and I did my homework. I turned it in and great. I'm good to go. This is a, an ongoing process that we do. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll go through, these are just kind of the worldview. These are the, I believes, right? So we talked about that. Um, the identity, this is, I am. Uh, and then the principles, I will, I won't. Uh, so now let's kind of jump into the, uh, the passions. Um, what are your passions? So, so the passions, um, what you love, your passion point um, points you in the direction of your purpose. Uh, your passion gives you energy to do the work you need to, uh, needed to live your purpose. And that is something that's so important because if you have people that work for you or yourself or anybody, you can tell who absolutely loves their work. And when you hear some of the statistics that above 70% of the people in the U.S. don't love their job, 
um, that they're just doing your job to get a paycheck. I mean, that, that blows my mind. I, I, I want everybody in the company to love doing what they're doing. And, and it's just such a, such a better way to live your life. And I think it was Mark Twain that said it first or best that says, you know, if you, if you never want to work another day in your life, do something you love. And that, that's your passion. And you can tell when people are passionate about something and you can tell when people aren't passionate. Um, so these are the I love. And a couple of my examples, there's, I, I love finding the silver lining in negative events. Um, I, I, I feel that the, the Lord has a plan because that was one of my worldviews, right? One of my worldviews was I feel that the Lord has a plan for my life. And as long as I follow that plan, things will work out. Um, that filters down into this, this passion of mine. I, I just love finding the silver lining, right? Bad things will happen. And it's like, man, well, that, that was horrible. I can't believe this happened. You know, we had to get off this tower or this thing happened to there or there. And then all of a sudden you, you come back around and it's like, oh, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you for not having me go into business with those people. That was definitely a disaster. I just didn't see it at the time. Or thank you for having me do that, um, that, that, go to that event when I didn't really want to go to the event, something really, really good came out of it. Um, so, it, and that's, I, I love finding those silver linings, both big and small. Um, and whenever I go to a conference, I always joke that there's always some reason why I'm at that conference. Sometimes it's like, oh my goodness, one more conference. I can't go to another conference, but there's usually somebody I meet or some little nugget that I learned that it's like, oh, that just made the whole conference worth it. Um, the other one is that, uh, I, I love asking a few questions that totally change the conversation. Um, you know, the Lord gave us two ears uh, and one mouth. Um, and, and sometimes it's easy to do not a lot of talking. Sometimes it's really hard, especially if you're a subject matter expert. And, and I just, I love being able to see what's going on, hear the conversations, and just ask a simple question that, that converts the, the discussion to the direction that it should go. Um, and that's just something that I, I've always been passionate about doing, uh, that, that it's, it's kind of, it doesn't happen all the time. I don't always get to do it, but it's neat when it, when it happens. Uh, another one of my loves is that I, I love hearing, uh, when I've made a positive impact in someone's life. Um, I, sometimes I get, I get letters from spouses of employees or employees themselves that say, Hey, you know, thank you so much for letting me grow as a, comp a person uh, working for your company. I've, I've learned a lot and, and here, here's what I've learned and this is great. Or other ones that are, you know, from spouses or, or children that say, thank you so much for letting my daddy come home for my, my birthday party. It was a great surprise. And, you know, obviously that's up to the employee, but it's just neat to know that we had a, a positive influence on them. Uh, and that's what I'm very, very passionate about. And, and you notice that most of my passions, uh, when I look down through the rest of my list, they really aren't about what I do, like the, the fact of being a CEO, that I love to be, quote unquote, a CEO, or I love to be in control of what I'm doing, and I love to be the person that's you know dictating things. Uh, I looked at my passions because I went through that whole, the whole um, process to this, it is regardless of what I'm doing, um, the title I have or, the, or where I'm working, what do I love? And those are something that that really, really helps you because when you when you look at that and you you do tie that to the next one, because all of these flow into each one, when you tie that to the next one is what is your purpose? Right? Why do you live and work? Um, you know, and and your purpose can be that, you know, to 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 live to the glory of God, what he has planned for me. Um, that's a good one. And then you say, okay, but what is the purpose underneath that? That's a great our overarching one. But below that, what is my my purpose? Is it to my purpose to be the CEO of Whisper? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that's my, my purpose is not necessarily to be the CEO of, of Whisper. It may be the way I manifest my purpose. Uh, and the purpose for me that, that I've come up with through all of this and my steps, uh, and this is a, a living purpose, right? It might tweak. And as I get into different life stages, maybe it becomes a little bit different, or maybe I change gears and I, found, I find a new purpose, uh, something that drives me. But my purpose is to provide opportunities uh, for people to reach their full potential. So my purpose, what gets me up in the morning every day is to provide opportunities for people to reach their full potential. And that's what I, what I want to, to be remembered for. And that's what I try to, to live my life by. And not because I put it down on a piece of paper and it's something that I aspire to be. Yes, I'm working towards my purpose, but this is what allows me, I'm non-confrontational by nature. Um, so I, 
you know, I don't always um, want to come out and you know, reprimand somebody. I tend to like to sit back and make sure I have all the facts and then say, hey, this is how I've connected the dots. The thing I'm learning over time is that I typically connect the dots correctly. And, and I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I really probably should have been a little harder on them. And, and, and the reason that my statement is helping me is that provide opportunities. Okay, that's an easy one for me. I provide opportunities all the time, whatever I can. I, I just, I like doing that. And those opportunities manifest them in many different ways, depending on who I'm dealing with, whether it be at Whisper or with the Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts or, or my family, um, but to reach their full potential. So if, if I really truly believe that that is my passion and my, per or my purpose in, in life, then when I sit down with an employee and say, hey, you're not giving me your best, or I see you're struggling, how can I help you? get where you need to go, or I think you need these resources to work with, that, that made it so much easier for me to get over oh, this confrontation of like, oh, should I really say something? Should I not? Uh, when I truly believe that I want every employee and every person I come in contact to be their best, I, I'm willing to help them, help a, send a, give a helping hand, but I'm also willing to have some of those uh, crucial conversations that are, are rather rather hard and maybe don't follow with my my normal personality uh, that I have. But those are, you know, worldviews that I had of, you know, non-confrontational and, and it's painful to be confrontational. But then as I work through them, I was able to change my worldview and say, no, it's okay. It's okay to have that. It's okay to have some conflict and it's okay to talk to people because my overarching purpose is to provide these opportunities for people uh, to reach their full potential. Um, so I encourage you as you step through this uh, that it, it it's going to be this work in progress that you do, and it's not going to be, uh, well, I, I've set my purpose, and this is my purpose today. Uh, when I finally leave Whisper and maybe one of my kids or somebody is running it or something like that, um, my purpose might tweak uh, a little bit. But I, I don't know. I don't know that it will because this is something that no matter what I'm involved with, either swimming or Boy Scouts or something, uh, that this this purpose to me is is what drives me wherever wherever I am, whatever organization I'm working with. Uh, so that's a little bit on your on your purpose that we have. Um, the next one, this one is process, and there's really not a lot of writing that goes with this, but this is the our core. So we we talked about our core, building our strong core, right? Our world worldview, our identity, and our principles, um, and then. Uh, your your opus, which is love of work. So you create a vision for your uh, your 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 um, your work that helps you feel fulfilled and helps you feel like, hey, I am making a, a difference and I'm living up to 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 what I set out as my vision for my life. Uh, and then you create a playbook, and the playbook of uh, um, it, it, it's your action steps. What are you doing? This isn't good enough just to say, well, I have a strong core. Okay, well, what are you going to do? How are you going to do that? And there's there's a lot more to these these processes here, um, but I'm actually not going to go into those too much on this video because you really need to know that they're coming, right? That you know that you're working on your opus, which your your statement of your your vision for your love of work, and there's your your strategy on how you're going to live out your opus and live out your principles and your uh, your overarching vision. Um, but really, you need to be spending a lot more time on on the the first parts of this to to work uh, through what your worldview is and your your identity, um, your uh, principles, uh, your passion and your uh, or your purpose and your passion. Uh, so let's see, we do have one question here. So that's something I forgot to uh, to say is please ask questions all throughout this if you're if you're on live. Um, I think it's great to have more of a discussion to answer something as opposed to to leave them all for the end. So. Um, let's see, do you work to bring your passion into your work, um, to make it satisfying? Uh, so absolutely. If, if my purpose didn't fit what I was doing, uh, as, as CEO of Whisper, I should probably not be CEO of Whisper, um, because it doesn't fit my, my, my purpose. Uh, and, and I should either change it a little bit. Um, what I'm doing as a CEO, or I should say, hey, I need to step down as CEO, and maybe I like to do the technical side of things, and my my purpose is to or is to find the new technology and push the envelope and invent something new. 
well, maybe that's better served as the CTO and I need to have someone else be the, the CEO. Um, so I, I think you definitely want to make that. You also definitely want to make sure that it, if your job doesn't fit your, your, your passion or your purpose, um, you might want to find a different job, right? And, and it's, it's something that's hard to do, but if you're not really feeling fulfilled, um, but you love the company you work for, then figure out what you need to do to have be fulfilled there. And part of that process of understanding who you are is to go through the, the first part of this and work it all the way down. Because you may think your passion is one thing or your purpose is one thing. And when you really find out, it's not that after you've gone through these exercises. Um, but I would say, for me, I want everyone in my company to, to be in their, working in their strengths, working in their passion, working for their purpose. Uh, because that would allow them to, to, another way to put it is think about whisper in the shower, right? You know, oh, I was thinking about how I could do this better or do this different or, or something like that. And that, that's, that's what I want for every, every role, whether you're the janitor all the way to the CEO, um, you're working on how do you live out your life and, and have a, a purpose there? And are you fulfilling your, your purpose with what you're doing with your work? Um, so we, we kind of talked about this and, and I wanted to, to circle back around to, you know, to be a great leader, you need to know who you are first. Um, what do you stand for? Um, and, and to do that, you have to have that, that, that strong core and, and that strong core is the first place you start. Uh, and then you move on to the, your, your passion and, and your purpose. And, and you can't do your passion and your purpose without the strong core and your core is always change. It's always a journey, right? I would hate to say that it's always changing because it, at first it will, it'll change a lot, but really it should be pretty solid, um, but it's going to change over time, right? New world views. Um, I, I can see how some of my thinking changed as I wrote it down, right? We talked about it at the last, uh, the last one, um, last session where I actually wrote down things that I thought I believed. And then after I put them to paper, and I tried to start living them out, I realized that that wasn't what I believed at all. That was, it was close, but it wasn't quite right. Um, so you really, in order to know who you are, you have to go through this process and then be that leader. Um, once you know who you are, then you can, you can choose to lead others uh, and lead them well, as opposed to, to being kind of wishy-washy or not sure what you stand for. Um, and another question I get asked quite a bit is you know why 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 am i doing this one thing we're doing for for everyone is um you know i want this for everyone in the company i want everyone in the company to go through the core exercise i want everyone to be working on their passion and their their uh, purpose i want them to have a strong core i want them to know who they are and and then you say well wait a minute isn't that a lot of work yeah it's a, it's an absolutely a lot of work and then what happens if they leave you? What happens if someone finds their core? Because if you remember, uh, my core should overlap with every one of the employees' cores or close to it. Um, I wouldn't want it to be exactly the same, right? Because we're each uh, distinctly individuals, um, but we're, we're together. A and having that, your core should overlap because that means our passions are similar or we're going, your passion for what you're doing feeds into what we're doing as a company. Uh, and if they don't, then that's okay. You should go find a job where that that is. And I'm I'm nothing but excited about it when somebody says, "Hey, I'm I'm leaving." You know, we'll be sad that they're leaving, but they found the job that fits exactly what they uh, what they should be doing. Uh, we had one one lady who was a billing billing person for us, really really struggled in billing. Um, took her a long long time to process the checks. Um, she said she liked it, but you could tell that it just from the outside we could tell it just wasn't that. Uh, she ended up leaving our company, um, going to work as a billing person somewhere else. Uh, that that didn't work out well for her. And then she she decided to go in and, and go to to beautician school to become a beautician. And I wrote a glowing letter of recommendation for her because she always was coming in with a different hairstyle, different colors, everything. She was into that. You could tell that she lived that that uh, that job and just loved it. And and she's been doing amazing in that role. So that was great to see her finally get into her passion. And what was really neat is she came back to me when she was applying for that and said, you know, Nathan, I, I didn't realize it at the time, but you were absolutely right. I was miserable doing my job and this is what I really want to do with my life. And that's something that while I didn't want to lose an employee, I also didn't want to keep an employee in the wrong position because that means I wasn't getting 
really the, the, the best work out of them. They weren't happy and we were having to spend more time trying to get them to do the work than having them do it on their, on their own. And, and I think you kind of say, okay, well, that's fine, Nathan. Why, but why are you doing this? Right. Why are you willing to do this in your company? It, it costs whisper money. You're investing all this time. And I think it comes back to my purpose, right? Uh, provide opportunities for people to reach their full potential. And, and I'd have to be honest that when, when I, would do things like when I would have a, pay for a Dave Ramsey class for my entire company uh, because I didn't want my employees living paycheck to paycheck, or I would spend time mentoring people, or I would spend time doing doing those different things. Sometimes I would get pushback. Uh, well, you don't have time to do that. You're the CEO. Why are you Why are you doing that? Or you're spending this money that doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? Um, and it's like, well. Well, you know, I know it's the right thing to do, and I want my employees to work for me forever, but I didn't really have a good answer to why. It was just something that I said I, I wanted to do. And now when somebody says, well, why do you spend that that time, and why do you spend the, the money on that? I can say, well, no, 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 I do it because I my purpose is to provide opportunities for people uh, to reach their full potential, and, and that's why I'm doing it. And I have the vehicle, the ability to do that which is Whisper. Whisper has allowed me to do that. I can affect more employees, more families uh, by having the vehicle of Whisper. And I think it should come to no surprise that Whisper's um, uh, passion or Whisper's purpose, if you will, is to create opportunities that make a difference. Um, so you see they're very similar because I'm the founder and CEO of Whisper and it should um, match mine relatively closely, right? Create opportunities that make a difference. Uh, and that's either whether we're connecting customers or we're we're taking an employee that never went to college and now has, you know, gone gone on and now is one of our managers because they just they had the right work ethic and attitude. And you know, we we actually struggled with with this for a while as to what was going to be, you know, Whispers, um, you know, main purpose. What are, what are we fighting for? What is our what do we want our identity to be? And it became very clear to me afterwards that it should mirror a lot of what, what my purpose is. And looking back and how we crafted everything, we had kind of a parallel path. Uh, we did them kind of at the same time. And it, it really, really, really hit home when we both came to the same conclusions, going through my leadership team and going through uh, my personal journey on this uh, to get to that this is why we're doing this. And it, it's okay that if your why doesn't fit with my why, that's okay because whether you can, as long as you can get your why to fit into your role that you're doing here, perfect. But if you can't, then that's okay. But go find a company where your your why fits. Uh, so let's see, we've had a couple questions come in. So um, let's see, where do I keep my cord list? Uh, are there any worksheets or journals or templates? Um, so if you go to the... Um, if you go to the website that they have here, uh, Built, Built to Lead has this framework, the 12842. Uh, it, it's kind of working through. They have some some different uh, work that you can do there. It talks about working your core. Um, this is my core. So if you can see it on the sheet, I know it's going to be kind of hard, but uh, this is just basically what I've already shown you in these videos. It, it, it asks that same exact question, and then I fill it out. Uh, I have it in a sheet. Um, I actually, honestly, I, I, I can't believe I'm even admitting this because you guys know I, I, with my dyslexia, I don't go back and read things that much. Uh, I, I now read this once a week. Um, I used to not do that. I remembered what was on it. Um, but as I started reading it more and more, it was like, wow, okay, I'm starting to change this. Or I, I watch a movie and you're like, you know what? That's, that's what I stand for. Uh, so I, I added in here and, and, and it's something like one of the examples, um, that I do, let me see if I can find it. Um, uh, let's see, of course I read this all over and I know it's in two different places. Um, so um, I believe, uh, let's see, I believe that um, making the right choice uh, is hard to do, but worth it in the long run. Oh, that's why I missed it, it was my second one. So I believe in doing the right thing every time uh, is hard work, but it's worth it in the long run. And I added that in there after I watched a movie where there was two hiring managers um, that were interviewing a guy and they told the guy, hey, you know, we're, we're going to receive six boxes, but we need you just to sign for five. And, and then we need you to hide the sixth box over here. 
And if you can do that, you, you've got the job. And we don't, you know, come back to us tomorrow and tell us if you can do that. That's the way we need to operate. And the, the gentleman went home and he hemmed and hawed and he talked to his wife about it. And it was like, no, I can't do that. And they're like, but sweetie, we need the job. We have to have the job. He had to support his family and everything. And he came back in the next day and said, I can't do that. I'm not going to lie about that if I receive six boxes. And, you know, I don't even, I don't tear up when the dog dies. I don't tear up when, when something sad happens, but I teared up when the guy made the right decision. It's, it's a hard decision and we have to stand by our principles. And because I watched it in that movie and said, wow, that really moved me. I really do believe that I, I added it to my worldview. Um, so I have it just in a sheet of paper. Um, you can keep it in a journal. You can keep it wherever you have and don't do it and then lock it away. Um, just, just, you know, keep it. Um, the question that somebody asked is what movie it was, it was, um, it's either facing the giants or it's one of the movies that that group has made. It was, um, or no, no, it was, um, I think it was fireproof. I think it's fireproof. Um, their, their movie they made, it's about, uh, um, building, you know, kind of a, a, actually, it's actually kind of like building a core for a manifesto for being a man. And that was one of the gentlemen in there. He was trying to go in to get a job there. And it, it was just a great, great movie. Uh, so let's see. The other questions we have here. Um, yeah, so this person says, um, uh, we found that over the last few years uh, that it's always better to be an ethical company. During COVID, we decided to, to help underprivileged families. We didn't advertise this. We just did it because we can. Uh, we found that a, a, a good side effect of this, um, of having good, or this is a good side effect of having good ethics. Good things happen to us back. Uh, do you have a similar experience? Um, uh, all day long, every day. Um, and this kind of comes back to me with the, the uh, silver lining. Um, we, we have been... Given the opportunity to help competitor WISP, we've been given the opportunity to help people where we refer customers over to somebody because we're not the right fit. Uh, we have stood our ground and said, no, we're just not going to do that. Um, we've had a couple, um, we provide service to MDUs, multi-dwelling units, and we bought a company and the company was kind of finagling some things around the side, offering, you know, free unlocked uh, boxes and everything. And I put my foot down and said, we're just not going to do that. I, I know it was something that was the previous owner did, and that's up to him, um, but I'm just not going to do that. And, and we caught quite a bit of flack over it. Um, but ultimately, then, when we were negotiating on our contract the next time, they knew that we were standing by our principles. And they said, well, we trust you because we know that you're not going to do something that you shouldn't do. Uh, and I'm, I'm with you. We, we just literally had this discussion on our, around our leadership team about you know, could we do like bring baked goods into the, the hospital or something and post it on our social media? And I, we, yes, bring, bring baked goods into the, the hospital by all means, but please do not post it on our, our social media that we did it. Don't do that. Let them post it. If they want to post a thank you, that's great. Um, but I, I'm, I'm with you there is that you do things because you can and, and because it's the right thing to do, not necessarily because uh, you get all the the marketing flair out of it, which I'm sure my marketing people are cringing because like, no, that's a good thing to to be able to do. And, and don't get me wrong. It's good to tell your story. Um, but why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you want to get marketing out of it? Or are you doing it because it's the right thing to do? Um, so who, who, another question we have is who do you share your core with? Uh, does anyone read or approve it? Um, so I think, I think that's kind of a, a, an interesting question. Does anybody approve it? Well, this is my core, so nobody really approves it. I approve it. Um, but I do work with my executive coach on it. Um, he's, he's from Built to Lead, and it's a discussion, right? Because I will write something down, and he'll challenge me. And it's like, well, do you really believe that? Well, like one of the things that I did is I, um, I wrote down here is that um, I, I, will, I will give people more, more chances to succeed than they deserve, right? And that's something that I wrote down in – and that's something that I, I believed. And he challenged me on. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I give people more chances uh, than uh, to succeed than they deserve. And, he, and we unpacked it and we unpacked it. And when I finally got done explaining to him in more words than just that sentence, I realized, who I don't 
I don't want that. I don't want to give them more chances to succeed. What I want to do is, and we changed it to, I will give grace, um, but it will not be free. Uh, a discussion around the grace that was given must happen uh, in a safe way to encourage learning. Uh, so that's something that's where I grew through this process. And back to that non-confrontational is I, I wasn't really be willing to be confrontational when I knew I should have. I was giving all the grace, but I wasn't expecting the person to learn from that grace that I was giving. And now that I've written this down and now that I realize I, what I believed uh, before wasn't quite right and I, I fleshed it out more, uh, it's definitely helped me. Um, so I work with a coach. Uh, our whole entire leadership team works with that, that coach um, as well to build a strong team uh, to help us uh, transform uh, together. Um, we, we are going to be rolling this out to all of our employees. Uh, it's something I'm super, super passionate, as you can imagine, right? We're, we're talking about our purposes and our passions and everything today. Um, I want to roll this out across all of my, all of my team. Uh, I want every employee, and, and I, originally when I was talking to uh, uh, David Deck is his name, my executive coach, and I was talking to him, um, I said, you know, I don't want to make it mandatory. I, I want people, one of, one of my, other, my other things that I, I believe is that I am very willing to help someone that's helping themselves. If you aren't moving your own arms and legs and trying, then I, I don't want to help you at all. I'm not interested. I'll just, no problem. I'll walk by, no problem to help. But if you're helping yourself, I will pour everything I have into you. Um, and one of my big things is I don't want to make this mandatory. I, I didn't want to make you working on your core and going through the discovery process and learning all this and spending time on it. I didn't want to make it mandatory because then it, be, then it becomes drudgery. But as I said those words out loud to him, I started to think, well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I do want to make this mandatory because if you don't believe in what I what I believe in is that you can become better than who uh, for who you are and you can become a better person. I don't want you working at Whisper. Uh, and fortunately, I'm in a position as the CEO that I can I can say, yeah, that's a prerequisite. I want you to to buy into this whole framework of how do we build leaders and even if you don't have a title as a leader, we're all leaders. Um, so we are going to be rolling this out to our entire company. Uh, hiring people to be the coaches. Uh, I've always dreamed, if you guys have read the book, um, The Dream Manager, um, it, it's an amazing book. It, it talks about how solving people and helping people, the, 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 nut, the nut of it is, but you should still read it, is they had a, a janitorial service that had like 400% turnover. Nobody wanted to be a janitor. Um, and they set out to try to fix that. And through the book, they set out fixing people not wanting to be a generator, a, a, gener, a janitor. And um, they just did an amazing job. And that's what I want to create here. Um, and the built to lead framework is what we're going to use to help people identify their cores, figure out who they want to be. If it fits into Whisper, awesome. If it doesn't fit into Whisper, awesome. Uh, but they're going to know who they are. and They're going to be better for it. And we're going to be able to, to, to grow as a company and do amazing things. You will not be able to stop us um, because it's just everybody's rowing in the same direction. And, and it's interesting that, yes, I want Whistler to be super, super successful, but again, that's not even why I'm doing it, that, that I'm doing it because I firmly believe in people, seeing people get to their, their full potential. Whisper is my vehicle, right? Whisper is the way I can do that when we go from, I think, 125 customer, employees now to 200 to 300 to 400, I have more, more opportunity to do that and help more people. Uh, so let's see, we have another, uh, another question here. Okay, so this question, this is a really, really good question. I'm so glad you asked this. Sometimes I feel I am spread too thin as a CEO. I need to find someone to share responsibilities. Uh, how can I be sure I won't end up training someone that won't leave and become uh, our competitor? And I, I know this is a big, big thing, especially with smaller WISPs, right? So you understand you're the CEO, you, you founded it, you've done a lot of the hard work, the technical, back, especially back in the day when it was all super technical. And then you train up your right-hand man or right-hand girl, and then they leave and they just go start another WISP. And you're like, what just happened there? That, that's not how it's supposed to be. And, and that's a risk, that, that is a serious risk. Um, and I've had several employees leave to to go work for other other ISPs, and you know you you wish them well, and you kind of think, oh my goodness, 
are they going to hurt me? What are they going to do? And, and in the short term, it can be very hurtful because they, they, they take some employees with them. They take some, uh, some customers and everything. But I look at it and say, well, I'm building something much, much bigger. And, and if they didn't believe in what I'm building, then, then they aren't going to be able to achieve what I, what I need to achieve. Uh, and I know that's a, that's a hard thing to say and say, oh, my goodness, well, I, I, I don't want them to leave. Well, if you don't want them to leave, have them match your core, right? If their core overlaps your core, they probably aren't going to leave because they're going to be like, yes, you're the leader that I need you to be. And, but if you have as a CEO, if you have idiosyncrasies that drive people away, you're very dictatorial. You're very much like, can't be wrong. I'm the smartest person in the room. You may drive some people away uh, and, and you need to work on yourself. So be the best person you can. You can't control them, but you can control who you, who you are and, and be the best person you can be. And it, it's, it's interesting to me because the way you flip that thinking around, and I remember literally in 2007 flipping it around and saying, okay, what if I train somebody and they leave? Hmm. What if I don't train them, right? I'm always going to be too spread thin. I'm always going to be just too, like, I don't have enough time to deal with it. Yes, I want to train you, but I'm not going to right now. And then I become the bottleneck and my company will only ever be this big. What happens if you train them and now you blossom as a company and now you go from a thousand customers to two to three to four. And when you get to 4,000 and they decide they have to leave for whatever reason, they come become a very small competitor of yours. Uh, I don't know. That, you can put up with that when you're larger. Uh, so I would I would highly recommend that you don't think in um, in finite, right? Finite is, oh my goodness, if I have another competitor, we're all going to have to go after the same customers and I got to change my pricing. I got to do whatever. Think of it in the infinite. There are an infinite number of customers to go after and I'm going to go after as many as I possibly can. And if you're coming with me, let's do it together. Uh, if you're not, um, I wish you well. I, maybe you won't help the person. We've had many of small competitors that we won't sell them bandwidth, right? They're paying ten, two to three to four to six thousand dollars a month uh, for you know maybe twenty thirty meg back in the day, and we were paying a thousand dollars for a gig. I'm not going to sell you bandwidth, hand you a loaded gun to compete with me, but I also don't feel threatened by you because I know what I'm doing as a person and where my goals are to get to. And while you may kind of a little bit of affect me, you aren't going to really hold me down. And that's just the way I've always looked at it. And so far, knock on wood, uh, it's proven to be true that they either ultimately build up and then sell to us or they find out it's really hard, right? Monday morning quarterbacks are really, real, real good. It's easy to second guess the, the leader. And then when you become the leader, it's like, oh, this doesn't work so well. Uh, so that's just the way I've always kind of kind of looked at it. So... Good. Well, do we have any other questions there? Looks like we're we're about out of questions and about out of time. So, I, I think what I want to leave you, you know, these are some books that I think are really good. But I I would want to encourage you that um, this is a journey. You're not going to get it right, but but start thinking about it. Go back and listen to these videos and start writing down what your worldviews are and what your identity is, your principle. See if you can just get something down and it'll work with it'll it'll work in your brain and, and work through it. Um, I guess to one more answer to the question is I, I've had my wife read my core uh, just to see if, if it's something that you know resonates and you know does she say yes or no? You could start there, start with your spouse. Um, but but it's really something for you to 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 know. I haven't shared my full core um, with my whole leadership team uh, because I don't want to. Um, influence their core. I want them to develop their own core first. I've shared some of my core with them, but I don't want to share my full core because I want them to develop their full core first. And then we kind of do the comparison as a team to see, you know, as long as we have that overlap and their passion is in where they are, their purpose is where they're doing, then it works really well. Uh, so I, I think it's a, it's a great process. It's a great journey um, to be able to go through and really understand who you are to then set yourself up for being a great leader and guiding people to, to where you, uh, where you can take them and where your, your passions take you. Um, so with that, thank you very much. We'll put these books in the, in the, um, comment section for you and, uh, please send me any other questions you might have. If you want to do one, do an offline or whatever, you can get a hold of me and, uh, happy to see what we can do to help you out. So have a great uh, rest of your week and be safe. Thanks a lot.